For quite some time now, there have been questions regarding the possession of firearms with medical marijuana. This seemingly unending expanse of gray area has been caused by a glaring disconnect between state and federal law. This creates difficulty for legally-minded gun owners and medical marijuana users alike. What's more is that very few have taken the initiative to explain this disconnect or how possession of a firearm and marijuana is a crime. If you are a gun owner that may need medical marijuana for any of the several conditions to which it may be prescribed, or a medical marijuana card holder that is concerned for your personal safety, please join us as we explore some of the more common questions we've heard and what their answers usually entail. Question. If the state allows medical marijuana as well as concealed carry, why is it a crime to participate in both? To answer this question, it is first necessary to differentiate between state and federal law. You see, in the grand scheme, there are three different levels of law in this country. The overarching law, or law of the land, is federal law. Federal law applies equally to all 50 states. However, because there are 50 states, each with their own unique and demanding borders, geographies, and interpretations of law, there exists a need for a more local approach to laws regarding the population of each state and their respective legal requirements. That is where state laws fit in. America may be a union of states, but in the established hierarchy, federal law yields more power due to their scope and reach. The last level in this established legal hierarchy is municipality. Laws here are mostly ordinances that affect cities, townships, or villages. So to summarize, there is a hierarchy of laws in this country. All people are affected by federal law. State laws are applicable to the citizens of each respective state, and municipal ordinances only affect residents of the specific regions for which they were adopted. With that being stated, the reason why firearm possession with marijuana use or possession is a crime is because of federal laws and how the state law for licensing is tied to federal law. Question. How is marijuana considered illegal? What specifically criminalizes the possession or use of marijuana? Marijuana is currently identified as a Schedule I drug in the Controlled Substances Act, which is enforced by the DEA. Until marijuana is no longer a Schedule I drug, it will not be federally legal to use cannabis and purchase or possess a firearm, even if a person is registered in their state as a medical patient. Furthermore, because marijuana is a Schedule I drug, any use is considered federally unlawful, and use of marijuana is implied by possession. This means that having marijuana in your possession is equally unlawful as using it. That is why someone cannot possess marijuana and a firearm simultaneously. Question. What is the punishment if I am in possession of marijuana and a firearm? Anyone who possesses a firearm and uses or possesses cannabis is in violation of Title 18 United States Code, Section 922. The punishment for this violation is up to 10 years in prison and up to $250,000 in fines. Question. Are there any safeguards in place to ensure that medical marijuana users are not able to legally obtain a firearm? Does the federal government have any safeguards to prevent medical marijuana patients from unknowingly breaking the law? Yes. The ATF has a form that is used to perform a background check with the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, otherwise known as NICS. This form, commonly known as Form 4473, has a section dedicated to the use of marijuana, specifically Number 21, Section E on Form 4473 asks, are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant, stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance? There is also a bold warning that clearly states, 
The use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law, regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medicinal or recreational purposes in the state where you reside. Question. If I try to purchase a firearm and answer yes to section 21E, what happens as a result? This should almost immediately terminate the likelihood that the gun store would continue with the sale. You see, to sell firearms, a business owner must be a current and registered FFL holder. This means that they have a federal firearms license. In September of 2011, the ATF sent letters to FFL holders informing them that knowingly selling a firearm to someone who is a marijuana user, regardless of purpose for use, be it medicinal or recreational, would be a violation of federal law. This would permanently strip the business owner of their FFL and prevent them from selling firearms ever again. Question. What if someone lies on their Form 4473 and answers no, so that they can continue with the purchase of a firearm? That's called perjury. Lying on a federal form has consequences, which, in this case, is punishable with up to five years in prison. Question. Do I essentially lose my Second Amendment rights once I obtain a medical marijuana card? The answer is yes. In August of 2016, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that simply having a medical marijuana card is enough to suspend that person's Second Amendment right to purchase a firearm. The case originally began in 2011 when a gun store owner denied the sale of a firearm to a woman citing the reason for denial as her state-issued medical marijuana license. The woman filed a lawsuit, and the case made its way all the way up to the federal level. It was eventually ruled on by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. In a 3-0 to zero ruling against the plaintiff, the court stated that it was reasonable for federal regulators to assume a medical marijuana license holder is more likely to use marijuana. The senior district judge went on to say, in addition, a ban on the sale of guns to marijuana and other drug users is reasonable because use of such drugs raises the risk of irrational or unpredictable behavior with which gun use should not be associated. It is our sincere hope that this information has opened your understanding. With the passage of constitutional carry in Ohio, we also hope that everyone remembers that the use or possession of marijuana suspends the ability to legally possess a firearm or carry concealed.